Hey there, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to have a brief introduction of complex zeros of polynomials. We're going to be using them in the next few videos to take some complex zeros and build polynomials from them, and how to factor polynomials completely over complex numbers. So let's explore a little bit about it, what a complex zero is, where they come from, what you can do with them, and how far we can factor polynomials if we allow complex numbers. So um, one thing that we I've been speaking of, I never wrote it down, but one thing I've been speaking of is this, this fact of polynomials, is that every polynomial can be factored over the real number system into linear, or irreducible quadratic factors. Linears giving you x-intercepts, like either crossings or bouncies, touchies, uh, touchings, where we have a multiple root, multiplicity would be even there. Or irreducible quadratics, which do not yield x-intercepts because they give you complex solutions. And that's what we're gonna start talking about is those complex solutions, just a little bit right now, how they work. And next few videos, we'll unpack that and go into creating functions from them. So. Um, a fact of polynomials is that they can be factored into linears and irreducible quadratics over the real number system. Now, if we allow complex solutions, then we can continue factoring. And if you had a polynomial, you could factor that into all linear factors if you allow complex solutions, which is fascinating. And here's what that means. Here's the whole thing that you really need to get. If you're going to allow complex solutions for a polynomial, then the degree of your polynomial no longer means at most this many x-intercepts. And that's what we had before. If you had a degree 12, you could potentially have 12 x-intercepts. Some might be repeated, some might be crossing, some might be bouncings, uh, but you could have 12 of them. Uh, but that's not a guarantee that you will have 12. If you allow complex numbers, then if we factor that into linears, here's what it means. Your degree equals the number of factors you're going to get because they all be linear. Every linear has a power one as its largest power. So if you had a degree 12, then you would factor that into 12 factors. Some might be repeated, but you would get 12 factors if you allow complex numbers for those solutions. So the degree now means number of linear factors, if you love complex, and it means number of solutions. So if you saw a degree 12 polynomial, you are going to be able, able to factor that into 12 factors and get 12 solutions exactly. But that is over the real, the complex number system. So you have things like with i in it. So we're gonna review that a little bit, like what complex numbers look like, um, what a conjugate means, and then this nice little fact I'll talk about. So what a conjugate means is two terms with basically a different sign in the middle. The first term doesn't change its sign, the second term does change its sign. So if we had a plus b, then a conjugate would be a minus b. If we had a plus b i, then the conjugate would be a minus bi. Now, why do we need to know that? Well, that's, that's what a complex number looks like. It's a real part plus or minus some imaginary part. And an imaginary number comes from a square root of a negative number. And that's where that, that comes from. So complex numbers are huge. So here's the main thing that we need to understand about uh, complex numbers. Every complex solution is going to come in what's called a conjugate pair. So if you get this solution, Three, uh, 2 minus 3i, we are guaranteed that there's another complex solution. 2 plus 3i. That is what is called a complex conjugate pair. So notice how the real part doesn't change. Notice how the imaginary part does change sign. We're going to talk about why that is in just a little while. But they always pair up like that. You might remember from the last few videos how I said, well, you know what? If we're factoring, we might get these irreducible um, quadratics. Now, what do they do? They create two solutions that are complex. What are those two solutions? They're a pair. Every irreducible quadratic creates a complex pair of solutions, complex conjugate pair, just like that. Every irreducible quadratic is going to do that. Why, why is it irreducible? Because you can't factor it over real numbers, because you can only factor irreducible quadratics over complex numbers. They're still going to have two solutions. Quadratic is a power two. It's still going to have two solutions, but they're going to be complex solutions, and they're going to look like this. Real part plus an imaginary and minus that same imaginary. So uh, let's do another one. If you had negative seven plus five i, the complex conjugate would be negative seven. You don't change that, but you change the middle sign, minus five i. 
Those are what are called complex conjugate pairs. Now, I want you to understand why they exist. I just told you that these complex conjugates come from irreducible quadratics. So think about what a quadratic would look like. A quadratic would be ax squared plus bx plus c. And if you set it equal to zero, you'd say, okay, if I wanted to find solutions, I would try to factor it. You go, well, what if it's not factorable? Uh, I'd use quadratic formula. You go, okay. So, so get this. If every polynomial can be factored into linear or irreducible quadratics, linear gives you x-intercepts over real numbers. That's what it does. That's all it does. Um, if they're to the, uh, an odd power, they're crosses. And if they're to an even power, they're bounces. That's what they do. Irreducible quadratics give you complex solutions. Now, here's why. So this is true, and it is true, that we can get all the way down to linears and irreducible quadratics. No power fours, no power threes, no power fives only factored into linears, power ones, or quadratics, power twos. Then when we got here and you go, well, it's not factorable, what would I do? I would use the quadratic formula for irreducible quadratics. Well, now I don't want really to worry about the linears. Those are already factored. We ha we'd have x-intercepts from them. But if you think about the quadratic formula here, Let's really look at it. If I had a reducible quadratic, something that I could factor, I really wouldn't do this. I would just factor this normally. Or if I, if I use the quadratic formula because I wasn't able to factor this over integers or rationals or something like that, well, then I would have at least negative b plus or minus some positive number in here. And that would create two more linear factors over real numbers. So wait a minute, what causes something to be irreducible? It's irreducible if this number, it's called the discriminant, the number inside of your square root. If this number were negative, I'm gonna just use negative number in here. What happens if there's a negative number inside of your square root? Well, this would yield an imaginary number. It would yield this something i, like square root seven i, or three i, if you had like nine, square root of nine, negative nine in there, you get three i. You're going to get something with an i in it. Now take a look at this. This negative b, that's a real part. This does not change signs at all. There's no plus and minus in front of that. That negative b, this is your real part. It's like the two, it's like the negative seven. It's the first part of a complex number. But look at the second part. The second part would be plus, and minus this square root of a negative number, something imaginary. Remember, you can't combine a real part with an imaginary part without a sign in the middle. You can't say, hey, what's three plus two i? It's three plus two i. It's like apples and oranges. You don't get a oranges. That sounds weird. You just get a complex number. It's two numbers sort of mashed together, but it's that plus and minus from the quadratic formula that guarantees that we get pairs of complex numbers. You'd have this being something plus or minus the same number. It's not going to change, but you are going to get two different signs there. That is what creates these complex conjugate pairs. If we can factor a polynomial into linears, that gives us x-intercepts. Irreducible quadratics gives us something we use the quadratic formula for that has a real part plus or minus an imaginary part. That's why they come in pairs. That's why irreducible quadratics always give us complex solutions and irreducible, I'm sorry, and um, conjugate pairs for those complex solutions. So this part would basically be wrapped up as if I split that fraction, some real part, let's just call it A, whatever it is, plus or minus some sort of a number that has i in it. I know I'm kind of messing up with my b here. This, this b is a different b than that. I really shouldn't use it. But I wanted to model that up there. And so this is where it comes from, is that this quadratic formula saying, this first part, if I split the fraction, would be the real part, plus or minus some imaginary part. But the a and the b themselves would not change value. That's why they always come in pairs, is just because of that plus and minus. So what does that mean for us? And this is where we're going to end our our lesson today is that if we understand all this stuff, if we understand that when we start using complex numbers, we can take those irreducible quadratics and we can factor them further over complex numbers. X minus two plus three i, x minus two plus three i. I think I said the same thing twice. 
x x minus that one and x minus that one. So you can have these two different factors if we use complex solutions. <clears throat> well, those are both linear. And what that means is that if we allow complex, we can get whatever your degree is, that number of factors and that number of solutions. Well, let's look at a degree six polynomial. If we have a degree six polynomial, then we are going to have to have six solutions or six zeros. Some of which though might be complex. However, if you have a complex, they always come in pairs. So let's look through it. If I have this uh, degree six polynomial, I need six solutions. Two's a real number. You don't mess with that. That's done. Two plus I is a complex number. So I'd be looking for its complex conjugate to also appear. If it does, cool. If it doesn't, well, then I know that I have an, initial, uh, an additional zero that's not being listed. So I would say degree six, one, two, three, four. I'm missing two zeros. I have to have the equal number of zeros for the degree if we are including complex numbers, which we are here. So the two, that's a real solution. That stands for um, an x-intercept in this case. And it's a cross in this case. The two plus three i, the two plus i says, I also would have to have its complex conjugate. So two minus three i. Negative three minus i says, well, wait a minute. I also need those to be paired. Every complex solution will be paired up. Guaranteed, I just explained why. It's because quadratic formula, the plus and minus, creates that pair automatically for any irreducible quadratic formula. Irreducible is only over real numbers. If you start allowing a complex, well, then we do reduce them, but they come in pairs. That would be negative three plus i. And then zero. Zero is also a real solution. So we would look at this and go, there's one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. That's six solutions, including complex numbers. And that's a degree six. That will always match if we are using complex solutions. Again, if this is over reals, we say the degree is the maximum number of real solutions we could have. Not necessarily all of them will be real. In this case, four solutions will be complex. Is it true that you'll always have an even number of complex solutions? Yes, because they always come in pairs. So if you have one, you have two. If you have three, you have four, at least. Um, or, well, if you have some pairs, you could have a pair and then one and another one. So this is probably an x, this is an x-intercept that's crossing, an x-intercept that's crossing, and then four complex solutions. How I know those are crossing is because we have six solutions for that degree six, therefore none of these can be repeated. So that's kind of interesting. Let's move on to the last one and we're gonna be done. So degree seven polynomial, in your head right now, you should be thinking degree seven polynomial is going to have seven solutions if I allow complex numbers. It will have a maximum of seven solutions if I'm talking about real numbers. So let's look at it. Oh, hey, so we see some complex. That means that every complex solution has to have a pair with it according to the quadratic formula because when we evaluate the quadratic formula with an irreducible quadratic, we're gonna get a complex number. We are gonna get a real plus or minus an imaginary that creates a pair of complex numbers. So what are they? Well, let's start with this one. Three minus two i would have to have a pair three plus two i. Negative two plus i has to have a pair of negative two minus i. Notice I'm not changing the sign of the real number. This doesn't change. This a is the real part. The plus and minus, the where the sign changes is in the second part, the imaginary part. So three stays, that sign changes. Negative two stays, that sign changes. Negative four is a real solution. Those do not have to come in pairs. That's just negative four, why? Well, because if this is not negative, and we just erase that, then that's a real number, and that's also a real number, and you can combine them. And so, especially if they're integers or something like that, you can combine real with real. It's only when that is imaginary that you cannot combine these two parts. And so therefore, when we have a real solution, it wouldn't show up as a pair. Only complex do that because you have a real part and an imaginary part that you're kind of sort of mashing together with a plus or a minus. That's where the pair comes in. And so we'd leave the negative four. The only other one that we have to deal with is this i. So this i would happen if you had, 
let's see, uh, a zero plus or minus the square root of negative one. So zero for your b plus or minus the square root of negative one. But it is a complex number. We just have to understand that this is probably best thought of as zero plus i. So we'd have zero, which is your real part. There is no real part here. There's just an imaginary part. Zero plus i, the conjugate would be zero minus i. So the conjugate to this would be negative i. You don't need the zero, but that's the way that I'm going to explain that to you. And so these would be our seven solutions. So i would yield a complex conjugate pair of negative i. That's a pair. That would be like zero plus or minus square root of negative one. That'd be uh, zero plus i, zero minus i. Hey, that's where that comes from. We'd have three minus two i, three plus two i. Negative four does not yield a pair because I just explained that to you. Real numbers get added and subtracted and create another real number. And then we'd have negative two plus i, negative two minus i. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only one real solution here. It's just negative four. There's only one real x-intercept here. That's negative four. The rest are complex zeros or complex solutions. So that negative four would be a cross. This would have to be a degree seven, seven solutions. Degree seven, that's an odd. Every odd polynomial must cross the x-axis at least one time. It can cross and never come back again, but it would have to cross. I've been saying that for a while, but now maybe you start are, are seeing that picture. I also said that with the Cartes rule of sines, you reduce by two because of the irreducible quadratics. An uh, irreducible quadratic basically takes two away from the degree at a time. Why? Well, because if you are having an irreducible quadratic and you use a quadratic formula, it yields two solutions that are complex every single time. That takes away two solutions from the degree in pairs, conjugate pairs, for every time you have an irreducible quadratic. So I hope that's starting to kind of gel in your head, kind of solidify about how complex solutions um, work with our degree, how we get the equal number to the degree for our solutions and for our factors that we factor over complex numbers. So in the next few videos, we're going to start building functions from these, uh, these complex solutions. We're going to basically take this and create a, a polynomial from it. So I'll see you for that.